A few months back, it was all the rage to take characters from everyone's favourite animated series or video game and see how they'd look as photorealistic humans with the help of predictive AI. I've seen some amazing real-world renditions of characters ranging from Geralt of Rivia to Guinevere from Dark Souls. So, as you can imagine, with my slight payday fixation on this channel, especially with regards to the game's lore and characters, it only makes sense that I'd show you how the gang should look in reality, at least based on their in-game appearance. Let's find out if the Diesel engine has had mercy on their souls. But first, I want to remind everyone just how brilliant Opera GX is. If you've been watching my videos for some time now, you'll already know that the GX browser is a staple of this channel. It's ideal not only for a busy content creator, but also any avid gamer who doesn't like dropping frames due to resource draining tabs. Opera's Hot Tabs Killer is an incredible tool for exactly this, allowing you to easily locate and close the source of any frame rate issue in seconds. But that's not all. The browser also comes with the GX Cleaner, a tool that allows you to remove all stored junk files to further boost performance. From a practical standpoint, the video pop-out feature allows me to watch other inspirational content whilst I edit, and I think I speak for all of us when I say the forced dark mode setting is a must-have, especially when browsing late at night. Finally, I've also chosen to switch my mobile browsing to the GX Mobile app, which is an incredibly seamless process, granting you access to the Flow feature. With this, you can send any files, videos, or links between devices at the touch of a button, allowing you to continue that four-hour video on the go. Check out Opera GX from the link in the description and change the way you experience the internet. All right, so let's dive into how this AI perceives our favorite heisters. I'm also gonna compare them to their intended actors or likenesses to see just how close the art team got to their initial intentions. First up, the one and only Dallas, aka Nathan Steele, aka Eric Etabari, American actor at model. I've gotta say, this one is a fantastic likeness. Eric's features are a little more chiseled in reality, and I've found that the software often seems to misinterpret shadows, rounding out face shapes. But overall, this is a phenomenal rendition of everyone's favorite medit bag man. The detail of his pronounced frown lines and the slight tinge of gray nails his more experienced look while still being an unabashedly handsome bloke. Up next, we have Wolf, of course, given his voice and likeness by Ulf Anderson. This one doesn't quite nail it. It seems to misread his eyes in particular, whilst also giving him a less defined jawline. Wolf always has a crazy look to him, but this AI rendition has made him look a little too much like the friendly businessman I'm sure he was before he snapped and joined the gang. It's not helped by the fact that it seems to have given him some hair on the right side of his head, again adding to the male pattern baldness look that I think Wolf himself is trying to avoid. Chains is up next, and I've always felt like his model gets actor Damien Poitier's eyes and mouth completely wrong. This is again reflected by the AI's rendition of Chains. The eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and overall face shape are just wrong enough to put him in that uncanny valley territory. I'd say it's done a decent job with the in-game material, but that itself fails to capture Damien's Chains, which we're likely to see back in Payday 3. Up next, we've got Houston. This is another pretty impressive human replication of the in-game model, and really is how I imagine Houston. He's noticeably younger than the other heisters, has a delinquent look to him, and seems to mean serious business. However, Derek Ray himself has more petite features and a less square jaw. Once again, I think this is a product of the AI not knowing exactly where shadows start and end, but even so, pretty convincing. Next, we have a heister that even non-fans of the Payday series should recognize, with Keanu Reeves' John Wick. After studying the in-game model, it just doesn't do him justice. The hair's too thin, short, and the wrong color. He looks more like Wolverine than Wick from the films. The AI's version is actually much more human than what we see in-game, and there's a little glimpse of Keanu in his eyes and nose, but the mustache, jaw shape, and hairstyle are all entirely wrong. I think Overkill's failure to nail that iconic hairstyle is what really lets us down here. Now, if you follow me over on Twitter, you may have already seen the AI's take on Hoxton, which is, as Payday Twitter man said, rather uncanny. Just like Wick, it can't comprehend the facial scarring, so it removes his burns, which may even be canonical after seeing Hoxton's appearance in the secret ending. Other than that, I think this one's absolutely brilliant. He looks sufficiently pissed off, cocky, and determined. I think this is pretty close to how Josh Len plays the character. The one issue I have is with the hairline. You see, Hoxton in game has his dragged back in a ponytail, but that wasn't well conveyed to the AI, so we get this receding look instead. Who knows, maybe this is how he'll appear come Payday 3. Clover was not quite so blessed by the developers. Alongside having the buggiest hair in the game, she also misses the mark visually, being modelled on her voice actress Eva Duffin. 
The AI actually does a decent job of giving her a more human facial structure, although it fails to pick up on the red in her hair, mole on her cheek, or the nose ring she wears. Even so, her nose and mouth look remarkably like Aoife's, giving us a pretty good idea of Clover's intended appearance. Dragon joined the crew after Clover and has some of his actor, Dragomir Mirsich's more defining features. However, I don't think it nails his very square face shape or his eyes, so the AI's attempt at the Karate is just a little bit off what I'd imagine him to look like. Definitely not a bad attempt with what it was working with though, and this was the first one that I had to play around with, aging Dragon up with the software to get an idea of how he could look in the upcoming Payday 3. The thicker beard and deeper wrinkles work brilliantly, this is a genuinely awesome aged up design. Jacket came next in the release cycle, and he doesn't actually have a confirmed actor modelling his appearance. I mean, he doesn't even have a defined face in Hotline Miami. That in mind, we don't have a ton to go off here. In game, he has quite a thin and youthful face with distinctly red hair. The AI seems to have picked up on the extra shadows this facial definition creates, resulting in an older and less clean shaven face. He doesn't look nearly sociopathic enough to me, so I cranked down his age and received a face that was much closer to how I see him appearing in reality. Somehow this younger version looks just a little more unhinged. Now then, time for another funny one. Poor Bonnie, she's not known for her glamour. Reportedly, she's modelled after Leah Delaria, but sadly, the software has misinterpreted the short hair and notably masculine features by converting Bonnie into a guy, beard included. Had it not assumed actual shadows plus 6 o'clock shadows on her, I think it would have come pretty close to nailing Bonnie's design. But I couldn't leave her with a beard she never asked for, cranking up the feminine features, here she is without the beard. Honestly, I think it misses the point of Bonnie, but when a face walks such an androgynous line, the software genuinely doesn't know what to do. Moving on, we have the fan favourite, Sokol. Overall, the software came really close here. His features and face shape are almost perfect, he's missing the nose scar and his eyes may be the wrong colour, but it's definitely close to creating a fully human Sokol. But if we look at the AI version next to Alexander Lobanov, who he's modelled after, you'll see it's adding about 20 years onto the guy and turning him into a Bond villain in the process with that dodgy haircut. Once again, tweaking a few parameters gets us a little closer to the young Sokol from Payday 2. Jiro follows on from Sokol, presenting the AI a new issue in the form of Asian features. His in-game model is based quite loosely on voice actor Togo Igawa, and if we account for the baldness, I'd say this one is fairly excellent at conveying Jiro in human form as a half-Japanese, half-American heister. The only real issue I have is with him not being entirely clean-shaven here. Bodhi was the gang's 13th member, and also has a famous likeness in Edgar Ramirez. I'd argue he was only quite loosely modelled on the Point Break actor's image, as his face shape is entirely different in-game, but once converted, we can see this was a really decent rendition of the character. That air of misadventure is definitely in him. Next, we have my favourite heister, the one and only Jimmy. He's based on a very specific look from the great actor Charlotte Copley in Hardcore Henry. Coke Jimmy is unique. The guy even has a combination of blood and drugs on his face at all times. Which, as you can imagine, the software struggled with initially, turning him into some kindly old afro man. You see, the AI didn't seem to know what to do with that mass of hair on his head, nor the majestic sideburns he sports. Taking a second screenshot in the light got us slightly closer to a believable Jimmy, although still a little more wrinkled than I imagine him. But, with a little more tinkering, here's a Jimmy I can abide by, if only the AI appreciated the glory of those sides. One to the last leg of heisters now, and here's the one you thirsty sods were after. Sydney, portrayed by Georgia Van Kulenberg, the main waifu for heisters across the globe, turns out to be a bit of a Karen. A few things first, the AI couldn't wrap its head around the punk rock mohawk, so instead gave her this odd swish across her forehead, and didn't notice that her hair also continues below her ears. As a result, it really fails to capture the attitude that Sydney exudes. Because if we look closely, all her features, from the eyebrows to the face shape, are pretty much spot on otherwise. No, she doesn't look much like Georgia, but neither does Sydney, if we're being perfectly honest. So I'd say this one is pretty good, considering the AI's limited comprehension of hairstyles. Rust, once again, brings the star power of Ron Perlman, one of the most unique looking actors in Hollywood. His in-game look oozes that attitude with a trademark smirk, square jaw, and thick white hair. For some reason, the AI then generates him as a slightly meek-looking old man. The eyes, nose, and mouth all look spot on, but it's just not the same without the expression on his face, not to mention his thin hair and rounded chin. I was able to fix his hair somewhat, but even then, it's not quite the Ron I imagine, although I'm not sure it's possible for the AI to comprehend Ron Perlman's looks. 
Scarface joined after Rust, meaning the Overkill team were trying to replicate Al Pacino's portrayal of Tony Montana. In-game, I'd say they do a decent job of this. They nailed the eyes and face shape, and that's about all you need to be convincing enough. But the AI really couldn't wrap its head around this one. Hair, eyes, nose, mouth, stubble, all absolutely fine, but for some reason it decided to put 10 extra pounds onto the guy's face. Hidden beneath those chubby cheeks lies a picture-perfect Scarface, but as it stands, he looks less like an infamous crime lord, more like a friendly waiter. Sangres was apparently based loosely on Joseph Balarama, which I find hard to believe, but his appearance is one of the most detailed and well-aged in the game. That seems to be a recipe for disaster with this tool, as details such as deep wrinkles, scars and facial tattoos are often assumed to be signs of old age. So whilst the Sangres you see here is almost perfect in terms of his base aesthetic, he also looks about 20 years older than he's meant to. Maybe a payday 3 luck for you. Anyway, I manipulated his hair to look less like a pensioner's, but he still looks like his knees could give out at any moment mid-heist. Duke seemingly doesn't have a known actor to be modelled after, meaning he really is how you imagine him. Possibly this could give you some inspiration. He's a little less studious looking and probably slightly younger than I imagine, but it's still not a bad likeness whatsoever. This is another one that really gives off that heister vibe for me. I'm going to do Joy next, even though I did Ethan and Healer for your amusement, as they are much more so considered fringe members of the crew. I have no idea who Joy is portrayed by, but damn, the AI has created a genuinely believable human being here. It doesn't seem to be the best at picking up on Asian features, hence why she looks distinctly Caucasian, but outside of that, this one almost perfectly captures Joy's facial structure. The strands of hair on the left are annoying and seem to be drawn from the pillar in the background, but Outside of that, I'm really impressed by this one. Finally, let's have a look at the YouTuber couple who somehow found their way into the game. Ethan first, of course portrayed by Ethan Klein. They gave him a bit of a Neanderthal brow line and shaved a few pounds off his iconic chin, but other than that, not a bad attempt. Healer on the other hand, it butchered. Her model does not look good in game, let's be honest, she looks a little alien here. The AI simply perceives these features as masculine and then turns her into a guy. I won't lie though, it's a pretty good likeness for her in-game model, which simply doesn't look anything like Healer herself. I did what I could to add feminine features, but it really just doesn't look like Healer anymore. This one was clearly beyond the capabilities of the software. And that does it for the entire Payday crew. I hope you've enjoyed a little glimpse at what could be, and now know who to watch out for should you see a group of Luckalites walk into a bank together. This code is so much fun to play around with once you get it working, so if you want to humanize your own Payday Gang screenshots, or simply want to try it out on other fictional characters, head down to the description and watch the tutorial by The Corridor Crew. Whilst you're down there, don't forget to give Opera GX a go. If you'd like to see a few of the remaining Payday characters I missed out on, as well as some of the cops we fight daily turned into humans with the power of AI, let me know. I'd be more than willing to put out a part 2 in the coming weeks if the demand is there for it. All that said, thanks so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next one. As ever, thank you very much to my mean infamy patrons and above. If you want to join that infamous club to see yourself in the credits or get early exclusive access to my videos, including the story videos, check out my Patreon link below. Remember the Discord is open to all if you crave some more payday discussion. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all very soon for the next one.